Well, hello boys and girls, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be looking at area problems as a way to f better understand division. Uh, we are in our math journals on page 193, lesson 2 of unit 6, solving area problems with unknown side lengths. Now, before we get too far, let's first remind ourselves, well, what is the formula for area problems, specifically for a rectangle. Well, if I want to know the area of a rectangle, I need to multiply the length of the rectangle times the width, and then that would give me the area, which would be in units squared. Okay. Now, that's great if you know the length and the width, but if you take a look at the first problem, uh, we are given a width, and then we're given the area, but not the length. Okay, what is the length of side D? Okay, now let's uh, take a pause for a moment and talk about the area of rectangles. Okay, so for example, I have a rectangle here that is not the scale, uh, four centimeters long by three centimeters tall or wide. Okay, in order to find the area of that rectangle, I would simply multiply length times width, or 4cm times 3cm, and that's going to give me a total of 12. 4 times 3 equals 12, 12 centimeters squared. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I were to divide this rectangle into four columns and three rows, I would have 12 square centimeters. Okay. They don't exactly look square, but you get where I'm going, right? Each of these squares represents one square centimeter. Okay, So that right there is one centimeter square. And I've got 12 of them, so my area is 12 centimeters square, right? So let's look at our second rectangle. Same width, but now I'm given the area, but not the, uh, not the length. Okay, so my length is missing. So in order to approach this problem, I need to start with the missing factor, which is here. I'm going to multiply that by 3 centimeters, and I know I'm going to get an answer of 12 centimeters squared. Okay. Well, when I have a, uh, a multiplication problem with a missing factor, I can just turn that around and make that a division problem. So I'm going to turn that around and make it 12 centimeters squared divided by 3 centimeters equals something. Well, of course, we know that 3 times 4 is 12, okay? So my missing uh, amount, my missing measurement must be 4 centimeters. Okay, so that's my mystery factor. So if I know the formula that length times width gives me the area in unit square, if I'm given uh, the area and one of the measurements, one of the either the length or the width, I can determine the uh, the missing factor or the other measurement. Okay. Now, since we are going to be dealing with large number division. Let's take a look at these two rectangles, okay? Instead of, say, 3 times 4, now let's look at this rectangle, which, again, is not drawn to scale, but the measurements are 40 centimeters times 30 centimeters, okay? Well, I would apply the same formula, which is length times width. So I would multiply the length, which is 40 centimeters, times the width, 30, and that would give me a total of... 1,200 centimeters squared, or 4 with 1, 0 times 3 with 1, 0 gives me 12 with 1, 2, zeros. If you recall uh, the previous lesson, 6.1, we talked about extending division facts by uh, using factors of 10 or just adding zeros behind some single-digit multiplication facts. So if I know that 4 uh, tens times three tens gives me 1,200 or 1,200, I can then uh, use the same approach for this problem here. Okay, I have, the, uh, I have the area and I have one of the measurements. This time I have the length. 
So I'm just going to jump right in and create a division problem. 1,200 centimeters divided by 40 centimeters equals something. Well, again, we have to look at the number of zeros on either side of the equation. So in my dividend, that's the number I'm going to be dividing, I have two zeros, one, two. And one of my other numbers, this one is called the divisor, what I'm dividing my dividend by, has one zero. So my quotient, that's the answer to my division problem, has to have one zero two as well, I should say. So really what I'm doing is I'm just dividing 12 by 4. Okay, and of course 12 divided by 4 is going to give me 3. So 12 with two zeros divided by 4 with one zero is going to give me 3 with one zero, otherwise known as 30, 30 centimeters. Okay, now knowing all this, you should then be able to approach a problem like this one. Okay, what is the length of the side D? Okay, well I know that I have a width of 9 feet and an area of 720 square feet. So I'm going to create a division uh, equation with an unknown. So I'm going to divide 720 feet by 9 feet equals, they gave us a letter already, that's the unknown, D. Okay, so again, I'm going to look for zeros. So I have one zero here and no zero in my divisor. So that means I'm basically dividing 72 by 9, or asking myself what times 9 gives me 72, okay? And you and I both know that that is 8, okay? But that 8 has to be paired with a 0, because I need uh, the same number of zeros uh, between my quotient and divisor and my dividend, okay? So this becomes 8 tens, otherwise known as 80 feet. And if you look at this model, you can kind of see that uh, this side uh, that is 9 feet wide is very skinny, right? But this side over here is way long, so it would make sense that D would represent 80 feet in length, okay? So that's all you have to do here. You have to apply that formula. Length times width equals area, and you just have to uh, compensate for the missing measurement. You're either missing the length or the width. Okay? Let's try one more, taking a look at this table here. So you've got a table that says the library has rectangular tables in many sizes using the information given. Complete the chart. Okay? So again, they have the formula for you right here. Length, width, area. So really, this is just a, an exercise in multiplication or division, okay? So what times 5 gives me 30? Well, of course, that would be 6. Even if you didn't know that off the top of your head, you could skip count by 5s till you got the 30 and count the fingers representing the number 5s, right? Okay? So that's all you have to do is remember the formula, uh, Remember to uh, reverse the problem from a multiplication problem to a division problem when you have a missing measurement, and just utilize your knowledge of single-digit multiplication and just throw in some zeros, okay? Try this out. If you get stuck or if you have more questions, talk to your math teacher. They would be happy to help you. Otherwise, friends, until we uh, speak again, have a good day. Thanks.